One of the key elements in the global rollout of COVID-19 vaccines is the cold chain, the network of freezers and refrigerators used to protect vaccine ingredients from degrading and becoming less effective. And it means vaccine supplies cannot be assured in countries which lack access to cold storage or a stable electricity supply. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine remains stable at refrigerator temperatures of between 2 to 8 degrees for at least six months. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine requires special freezers providing temperatures of minus 90 to minus 60 degrees Celsius to remain stable for up to six months because of its active ingredient, mRNA. It's incredibly fragile. Well, UNICEF hopes to have 65,000 solar-powered fridges in lower-income countries by the end of the year. Pfizer is also working on a powder form of its vaccine. Similar freeze-dried or powdered vaccines are already being used to fight diseases such as measles and yellow fever. Well, Ilaria Capua is a virologist and director of the One Health Center of Excellence at the University of Florida, and she joins us now from Gainesville by Skype. Uh, Madam, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Now, you actually wrote a letter to the medical magazine, The Lancet, about uh, the title of the letter is The Unsung Virtue of Thermostability, which is basically what we've just been talking about, vaccines that don't necessarily need to be refrigerated. How key do you think vaccines like this would be when it comes to really fighting COVID on a global scale? Well, thank you for having me here and thank you for allowing me to make this point because many world leaders have advocated for vaccines for all. And this is because we do not want pockets of viral circulation in areas where there are uh, largely unvaccinated uh, populations. And the only way to achieve this is actually investing now in technology so that we can do without the cold chain. Because as you know, there are parts of the world where the cold chain just cannot work. Um, obviously, the fact that we even have a vaccine, what, a year and something after COVID-19 was discovered is in itself a great achievement. But why do you think something like a thermostable vaccine, so that don't need to be refrigerated, why that kind of development hasn't been emphasized so far? Well, um, there has been a lot of talk about thermostable vaccines, particularly from developing countries, uh, not only for diseases of human beings, but also for diseases of animals that we know can be devastating for communities and can keep people bound in poverty. So um, I think that if we could take the opportunity that COVID offers us, which is the desperate need to have a vaccine that can be available in an equitable way to all the population of, of the world, um, this can certainly put us in a different position. The West, uh, unfortunately, had not really imagined that they could have uh, had to go through a scenario in which they would not have enough refrigerating power. And we are seeing this. We are seeing this as the difficulties of deploying uh, vaccine and the vaccination um, campaign are rising in many, many places around the world. Um, you say that there has been talk about this issue, but are you satisfied that anyone is taking the lead on it, so to speak, or, or who do you think should do so? I just don't think that uh, developing thermostable vaccines has become a priority yet, and it needs to become a priority. I think that if we can get the large research foundations, we can get a joint effort from WHO, OIE, which is the World Organization for Animal Health, and FAO, which is the Food, Organiz the, um, Food and Agriculture Organization, we can find a convergence of efforts that can bring us to an environment in which we will be able to administer not only COVID vaccines equitably, 
but all the other vaccines as well. We, if we could develop this thermostable technology for different pathogens, we would be looking at battling infectious diseases in a much more infectious, uh, much more efficient way throughout the world. Um, if I could just ask you a sort of obviously still related uh, a question because you are a European, you're Italian, but you uh, reside and work in the United States. Um, or you're obviously aware of the, I guess, vaccine nationalism that we have seen uh, spring up certainly uh, here in Europe and around the, the world. What do you think of the way that the vaccine rollout has been handled uh, across the globe, if you will? Well, what I can say is that I fear weaponization of vaccines, and this is something that I really think we need to fight against. So we know that there is a lot of talk about how the United States has exported no doses, and Europe has exported approximately half of its doses. So I don't really think that we should have different positions. We should be united and make sure that vaccines are not weaponized and are not used as a way to uh, exercise um, uh, difficulties or hardships on certain countries. Laria Capua, virologist and director of the One Health Center of Excellence at the University of Florida. Madam, always good to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.